Julia, welcome to Waypoint Connect. It's so great that you're willing to put the time in and be here with us. I know your schedule is really busy, so I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. No, not a problem. So um, I'm Julia Varley. I come from Somerset West originally in the Western Cape, and I moved here at the start of 2020 um, for work. I am a medical doctor, very junior still, okay. um, working in all the government hospitals in PE. So you studied at Teichenberg, right? Yeah, and Stellenbosch University. Stellenbosch, and, and like you said, you, you lived at home while you were studying, so coming to PE was like a big move out of the house. Yeah, my first time ever out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> um, I decided to take a very big step and just mm. move to a completely different province and city. Could you um, pick where you wanted to go to? Yeah, we can. We Well, we pick and the government decides. Yeah. Um, but we gener you put up a, um, a list of five places that you would want to go across three provinces. And then the government decides so which one of the... Uh, which one of the five they want to give how, you. How high up on your list of five were we? Number one. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's great. Um, so welcome to PE. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> Even though you've been here for a yeah. year. <laughs> and the, the reason why I wanted to talk to you is to find out from you, what did you experience working within the healthcare sector? What was your experience of COVID like? What did you experience? Because for... Like, like I, I shared with you earlier, I know a lot of people have been impacted by mm -hmm. COVID, but from my perspective, nobody from, from our household um, got COVID. I don't know of anybody personally that have died because of COVID, so it's, yeah. it's not the norm, but that's my experience, and that's part of why um, we decided to chat to you, is to find out what, what was your experience like? What did you experience working on the other side? Yeah, so COVID, I mean, it started around, what, 25, 28 March. Mm. Um, and I started working as a doctor on the 1st of January. Okay. So I was only like barely three months into being a doctor. Um, I still remember driving on Cape Road, that intersection between Cape Road and William Moffat. Yeah. Um, and I was sitting at that traffic light listening to the news when they were still talking about um, COVID in China mm. and whatever and I was like this is ridiculous I why am I even listening to this and I mean what not even a month later it was here um, but it was definitely I think it, it changed the way that um, that doctors saw emergencies which was a, a very big mind shift I mean generally when someone um, collapses or codes or uh, whatever you want to mm. call it in the hospital we like everyone runs gets the emergency trolley someone's on the chest and all of a sudden with COVID all our protocols had changed and that was no longer allowed so we would decide beforehand who's gonna who is for CPR mm. and who's not mm. and also there was a very much um, this new thing about you like we protect ourselves first so if someone is not breathing it doesn't matter because you haven't got your gown on, you don't have your mask on, you don't have your booties on. And that can take a good two minutes to get dressed. And especially when someone um, codes or collapses or goes into cardiac arrest or whatever, it's those first few minutes that matter the most. Yeah, and all of a sudden, it now no longer matters. Mm. We, we need to protect ourselves. And that was something that I think it's never really been that clear in medicine before. It was never about us, it's always about the patient. Um, so that did definitely changed a lot and it's it is difficult to um, especially working in a casualty and you see patients coming in and then knowing that this person is too short of breath we definitely don't we're not going to ventilate a 70 year old lady okay. so if she comes in she's short of breath we kind of just show her where the COVID area is and then two minutes or five minutes later we'll hear screams and we know that now she has passed away so it's not a, um, and then a lot of people say that oh, that makes you so cold hearted to just say it like that. Yeah. But I mean, it's, it's not nice for us either. Mm. It's not nice to know that we can't do anything and that we're not going to get up and do anything. Um, 
and then have to go explain to the family afterwards and sorry it's COVID there's nothing we could have done yeah. so um, it changed a lot especially from I mean what we have studied and what we were used to um, so what you're saying is it changed in terms of how you view things yeah and that translated into procedures and the way that you would do things yeah yeah it did okay and 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 I think that's part of the the impact that COVID has had it's it shifted things for us culturally yeah and practically and the way that we we do things and that's why a lot of people were saying coming out of COVID it'll take years for us to go back to normal if there is a go back to normal yeah. because some things they uh, foreseeing that that would never go back to the way it was yeah I think also this is very much um, because COVID is an infectious disease a lot of the things that we see I mean are infectious but things like HIV and TV I mean it's infectious mm. but we know how to protect ourselves yeah. against it but now all of a sudden there's I mean, there's other things as well that also have like contact, contact precautions and airborne precautions as well um, with regards to certain patients. But now all of a sudden, we don't want to touch anyone. And there was this whole thing um, at the start of COVID where you try and limit the amount of time you spend in hospital. So you come in, mm. you do your work, and if it only takes you two hours, then you leave. Meaning that like by one o'clock in the afternoon, there's no one left at the hospital or no doctors at least except the on-call team. Um, where that was not something that was that happened before yeah. and, and it was generally a thing like if you don't need to examine the patient rather don't mm. um, which is not something that that is what like what we were taught before so um, we were talking about it just now as well like it's as if people with COVID get treated as if they've got leprosy mm. and you don't want to you don't want to come close to them you don't want to speak to them you just lock them in their room and nobody must touch them um, and I think in that regard, it it changed patient management as well. Um, and I don't think all patients necessarily got the treatment that they needed to get, just because okay. everyone was you all of a sudden scared for your own life and not just the patient's mm-hmm. life anymore. And I'm thinking back to a friend that underwent a very high doses of radiation as part of her treatment, and she said for her the worst was the two weeks after Mm. where she was still radioactive yeah she couldn't be in contact with anybody they would have to give her food she'd eat on her by herself yeah Yeah. and give give the plates back yeah and from a psychological perspective that was the worst for her and I I think for initially the first few people that got COVID I think that was so much more and, and Hazel actually referred to that as well saying that it's people sometimes use the the phrase status yeah and with status comes a very negative connotation yeah and and I think we we need to move past that when we think of COVID not look at it as yeah you you know ostracized cut cut off from from everybody else yeah and for you working in the medical field did, did you experience that as well where people avoided you because you in contact with COVID yeah so i mean in hospital we generally had this rule so if you were working in the COVID wards you aren't supposed to be working going to mm-hmm. different wards you yeah. go to your COVID ward and you go home um but especially i mean understandably so you go home and you go change your clothes and you know go shower or whatever um but then what i also found is that even if i even if i wasn't working in a COVID ward if i was just just a normal day at the hospital and you go home and then all of a sudden nobody wants to touch you nobody you know like they just imagine that everything about you is contaminated and they even, see you and they see COVID yeah, yeah. <laughs> and even I mean even on weekends where I've now not worked with COVID patients for almost like two weeks and then I would go to a bra and then it's like oh but but um please don't hug me and also please sit in the corner or actually can we have a tea party outside and can you wear your mask and it's not that it's not that they were practicing social distancing generally it was just social distancing with me mm. um, as if I was now a contaminant so I I mean I told you before the time as well I phoned my parents many times um, to say how upset I was and I can't believe that I'm being treated like this and 
I, I don't have the disease. I, I would know if I'm sick. Mm. Um, but yeah, I guess it's, it's part of human nature and everyone's fears, so yeah. It, it just makes me think when, when I'm at a, a social event where I don't know people and we're just standing s- around socializing and eventually the conversation turns to, so what do you do? And everybody shares what they do <laughs> and they, they come to me and it's like, what do you do? And I'm, I'm a full-time pastor. It just goes quiet and everybody starts disappearing. <laughs> <laughs> so I think for you as a doctor, it, at this stage, it's yeah. kind of the same thing. The conversation just goes quiet and everybody yeah. just moves away. <laughs> I generally, um, I remember being in the, like, in the hype of the pandemic, my driver's license had um, expired and I went to the, um, to the traffic department as well. And I, well, firstly waited in a long queue and then eventually when I got to the front, they said, oh no, you're a doctor, you don't have to wait in this queue, you could have just jumped the queue and whatever. But doctor, tell us, how is it? How is it inside? <laughs> <laughs> we see this tent outside, but what is happening? <laughs> so, yeah, some people took a genuine interest, but others just stay yeah. away. No, that's awesome. And and it's, it's kind of that thing that having COVID is bad um, because of symptoms, what you're going through, what you're experiencing. And then you, you add on to that the fact that you then get isolated yeah. and cut off from people and it just makes it worse. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's terrible to see, especially people like in a high care or like those that we are trying to save. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, I mean, generally, well, some pe- some patients ended up dying very quickly, but mm-hmm. those that had a, like a more prolonged period of suffering, um, to know that there's no one that can hold their hand mm-hmm. and like sit next to them or even come visit them, um, it's like it's really terrible. And I mean, none of us want to do it because we also don't want to sit next to someone who's busy dying of COVID. I mean, that person is highly infectious. So it's it's difficult, and I mean, especially, I mean, not not a lot of people have experience with people that are short of breath, but someone that's short of breath is extremely anxious, okay. and then I mean, just to have someone hold their hand mm. does help them a lot. But yeah. I mean, nobody wants to mm. sit and hold their hand. So for you, this is kind of the first time not in the field but taking that responsibility stepping into that role yeah. full time yeah and now big surprise yeah you're given COVID and what comes with it yeah how did you deal with the with the stress that that comes with it I well I think that during the lo- a lot of the journey I was just thankful for not being a specialist or someone okay. senior just to know that if some <sighs> It sounds very almost irresponsible, but just to know that if something goes wrong, it actually isn't my fault. Mm. I'm the most junior one here, um, and it's probably not a good way to look at it, but Mm. in that way, I felt protected. Um, And to know that I'm not the one making the decision about something that no one knows anything about. Mm. Um, And also, I also felt like it was it was easier to hand over the responsibility to be like, oh, we're not going to do CPR for this person because she said so. Okay. And it was it wasn't my decision, mm. um, even though I really wanted to, for example. So, yeah, in that way, I was happy to be very happy to be yeah. junior, um, and it was also interesting to see to see the way that the hospital had changed in such a short time. And um, also that it wasn't that changes that happened in the hospital wasn't the government coming in and making the changes. Yeah. It was people that were working in that department saying that whatever is happening here is not going to be COVID safe. Mm. We should change our protocols or we should maybe we should move these wards around. And it wasn't necessarily the senior people in each department. Mm. It, it was some of the junior people as well. Um, so in that way, it was also, it was, yeah, I'm glad to have been there, to have worked a little bit pre-COVID and then during COVID yeah. as well. And, and I'm, I'm guessing here and working on figures, but in, in terms of dealing with losing patients, I think starting off in a pandemic, that ratio is, is <laughs> way out of whack. Yeah. Um, f- emotionally, how did that impact you? 
Well, I read this, well, luckily, I read this book before, it was like at the end of my studies, beginning of my internship, I read a book that was about palliative care, which is care for patients that are bound to die soon mm. with some terminal illness or whatever. Um, and the whole message of the book was that dying is part of living and that it wasn't, it's like doctors don't fail when their patients die. Mm. Doctors fail when their patients die in pain or die anxious or like, so using that message, I think that helped me a lot. Um, knowing that if people die, as long as they died in a, like in a um, respectful manner, pain free, mm. then generally, I mean, we can't save everyone mm. and people do need to die. Um, so that helped a lot. Um, but generally also a lot of us, a lot of the junior doctors were very much protected from, well, in some cases from working in the COVID wards. Mm. We did help out a lot, but I mean, a lot of the decision making wasn't dependent on us. Um, we were usually called for the death certificates, though. But I mean, it only like I think in the end, you kind of you don't grow cold, but you you kind of see it part of your job, but also not focusing on what exactly is happening here. You kind of compartmentalize it. Yeah. So you know that you know, this was a person, but now I just need to check is this person yeah. living or not. Okay. Um, yeah, I think also we definitely, I mean, we definitely did a lot of death certificates, like a lot, a lot. Um, but yeah, I guess it's just something that you, you get used to and you know that it's part of the pandemic and it just mm. is what it is. And this experience, how did that impact your relationship with God? I have many times during this pandemic asked myself whether, like I don't understand why God would have put me here. Um, especially because it's so far away from my family. I know it's what I wanted, but my idea of coming to PE was the fact that I could fly home every month um, and see my family, which ended up not happening. Um, I mean, I even told you about that story, but my my parents were here, or my, actually my whole um, family was here, like two days before the lockdown. And they'd literally <laughs> arrived, they were going to stay for a whole week, and then before we knew it that the announcement the was TV. there <laughs> and they left so in that time I yeah I definitely had questioned why I was placed here um, but on the other hand I also because everything all of a sudden you know like everyone's responsibilities were dropped all of a sudden especially in that first hard lockdown mm. um, because nothing was carrying on anyway. So I felt like I was on a holiday, but I was at work. And what I really did appreciate was the fact that Life Group carried on. We yeah. still carried on with um, Skype meetings. Um, and I felt like that was such a nice time to, because now I, I had probably had time for Bible study and I had time to sit down and, you know, join in on the yeah. Life Group. So in that way, I would say it did make my relationship a lot better I, I, I love that because we spoke about how being viewed different because you've got COVID mm. or what you would experience you might um, bring COVID to us that isolation concept mm. um, highlights that fact that we need other people yeah. and for us that are followers of Jesus we believe that God created us to be in community with each other and be in community yeah, with him, yeah. have an in intimate relationship. And and this just highlights that, the fact that you are isolated from your family, like mm -hmm. physically and because of lockdown and because of what you're going through, but you've got this other family that you're still being able to use technology. It's not perfect, yeah. it's not ideal, yeah. but at least it's there. Yeah. And you can still connect with them and, and have that relationship. Yeah, that's very true. So um, I think what, what I found during this COVID period as well, working with people, is that the people that are well connected are the people that coped well with COVID. Nobody, I think, coped well with COVID. Yeah. <laughs> but they did better um, on yeah. average than the yeah. people that were isolated, weren't yeah. connected. No, I agree 100%. 
Julia, thank you very much for, for sharing with us your experience of COVID. I think I've learned a lot, got a, got a new insight in terms of what the health uh, profession yeah. went through during this time. Yeah, so thank you very much for having you me. Thank you for taking out the time and, and spending it with us and just sharing your experiences. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thank you.